Hello gamers, welcome back, or in case you are new here, I'm NKZL, and I am going to talk about Throne and Liberty's Founders Pack. The Korean version of Throne and Liberty has just put out for sale a Founders Pack, just one. And in this video, I'm going to cover the contents. This will relate to the global version, because Amazon and NCSoft are working in close collaboration to deliver the same experience globally. Even if Amazon is lagging behind, it is extremely likely that we will get the same founders pack as Korea with slightly different pricing. They might even decide to have smaller tiers of this founder pack, so if you are like me, you might be curious what this founder pack contains. The prices that I'm going to talk about will be in Korean won, and you should expect them to be 20 to 30% more expensive in America and Europe. This game will be available on Steam, so for those of you from other places, maybe these prices will be regional. Fingers crossed. There is one more thing that you should be aware of before we delve into the contents of these packs. Most of these items will be character bound. While this is not ideal, unlike in most MMOs, in Throne and Liberty you do not need multiple characters, at least not for now. The same character can easily swap between weapons and builds similar to Final Fantasy XIV or New World. So, while it's said that these items are not account-wide, and I believe they should have been, and I am 100% sure this will cause some problems at launch when we will inevitably have server queue problems, at the very least, you will not have to worry about future release classes making these items obsolete, like in Lost Ark for example. Alright, so this Founders Pack cost 49,900 won, which is roughly $38. As customary with Founder Packs, there will be some limited items and each of us has to decide how much they are worth. But from a purely financial point of view, it seems that by purchasing the Founders Pack, you will get around 60 to 70% discount on these items compared to what the prices will be in the cash shop. So the first item in the Founders Pack is 500 Lucent, which is the game's cash shop currency and also the currency players trade with. This feels like a small amount for a Founders Pack, but I believe these have been kept low, so the economy does not get inflated too much and people would not have massive amounts of Lucent to spend before the price is settled down. Considering how impulsive gamers are, I doubt this will do anything. So personally, I would have liked to see a bit more. The cost of this amount of Lucent will be 13,750 won, which is roughly $10. The next item is a growth pass. This is a progression pass that rewards you with extra goodies every time you reach a certain level or complete certain tasks. Similar to a battle pass, but centered around leveling. To be more exact, this is their take on boosters, but instead of it being instant, like in WoW or Final Fantasy, you also have to work for it. Also, just like a booster, this can only be purchased one time per character. This will probably provide players with a considerable advantage, so it most likely will be a must buy if you want to be competitive. The cost of this booster will be 29,900 won, which is roughly $23. The next item is the Battle Pass, and this is the optional subscription of the game. It will contain both progression items and cosmetics, and similar to a Battle Pass, you will complete missions and level it up. Unlike normal Battle Passes, after you complete it, you will be able to keep gaining levels, and this will give you extra rewards. Another difference from the Seasonal Battle Pass system is that this will last only for 4 weeks, so it will more or less be a monthly optional subscription. The cost of this Battle Pass is 19,900 won, which is roughly $15. Sadly, for the rest of the items, they have not shared their value, and it is up to each of us to figure out what value they hold. The next item will be 10 support boxes. The support boxes will each contain 3 consumable elixirs. One that gives you 20% damage boost for 15 seconds, one that reduces the damage taken by 20% for 15 seconds, and a healing potion. This in my opinion is just useless fodder that developers always put in these founder packs just to make the list of benefits a bit longer. And now we can finally talk about the limited items. If you have been playing MMOs for a while, you should know that fashion is the true endgame. And if you don't believe that, 
you're simply wrong. So let's look at these fashion items. Arguably the most important item is the costume. This is called Outlaw and as the name implies it is a Wild West inspired outfit. It appears that the costume will only be divided into helmet and main costume. Personally, I would have liked them to divide it further into pieces, like BDO does, so in the future we could mix and match costumes. Keep in mind costumes in Throne and Liberty will be diable. Other than the costume, the game will also have a bunny skin for your ground form. In case you do not know, in Throne and Liberty you do not have mounts, instead you transform into ground, air and water forms. Basically, everyone is a druid from WoW. This bunny will be a skin for the ground form. There will also be a skin for the in-game pad and a sitting on the throne emote. And last but not least, the customary title that comes with this founder's pack. Clearly, there are quite a few items here and quite a few things to consider after seeing this founder's pack. The pricing will be one of the main points. This game is pay to win, everyone should already know that by now people that play 18 hours a day and the ones that spend hundreds or thousands will be the top players. An average player will probably end up spending 20 to 50 dollars a month to stay in the competitive percentage of the population and be able to participate in sieges and other mass PvP activities. We will see if this is something the silent majority finds acceptable or not and of course this will be reflected in player numbers. Keep in mind this will be completely irrelevant if you are only into PvE as there is no rush and you can take your time and enjoy the game. When it comes to fashion, we know the game is very beautifully detailed and in my opinion the fashion looks nice, but that's it. Maybe it's because it's the Wild West fashion and that doesn't have much appeal to me. I feel like they should have done better. The last time when they talked and showed us the dice system, we saw a very nice costume and I was hoping that would end up being the founder's costume. That being said, the founder's pack does seem to have a decent value. It's not too expensive and it does provide you with a good starting point, as well as those limited items. This was all that I wanted to share with you and my thoughts on the founder's pack. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments below. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and all that jazz. See you in the next one gamers.